Hi, Liz Zeglin here. Today I'm going to be working on creating a class in Microsoft Teams. So in order to do this, I already have Office 365 and I'm just going to log in the way I usually do into my account. Okay, so I'm going to do that typically how I do that. No, I might usually go to Outlook to check my email, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to go to the Teams app and click on this. Now, in case you do not have this app, that's okay. You can just search it in the search bar and you might have to install it or you might have to hit all apps and just find it from a drop down list. Okay, so I'm going to click on Teams and it's going to take me to the teams that I already have. So these are my five classes that I've set up today. Um, this is was set up by our principal and it's the entire staff. This is a team that I set up um, for my grade level partners and me so we can communicate here and share the things that we are doing with our classes. So all I want to do at this point is go to join or create team and I believe students and other people can join with a code if they get it if you don't input their names. Now I am going to input their names and I had my class list printed out and all I did is I clicked on create team and then I wanted just to go to class. So you can do a PLC, you can do a staff. Um, I was thinking this might be great for a YouTube club, um, this other category, and I will definitely look at that later. But right for now, I'm just going to do class. So I'm going to do ELA period two as a sample. I always like to put the school year in. Um, just so next year if I need to archive this class or delete it I don't delete the wrong class and I'm just gonna let that create now at this point this is where I would use my class list and start typing in student names and their emails will pop up and then they should get an email saying you know you've been invited to uh, Microsoft Teams um, and also using this teacher tab here, I could type in um, my code teacher, a special ed teacher who pushes into my class or my grade level partner partners at this point. So they would get everything that the students are getting. Now I'm going to skip this now because I have actually already done that and I don't want them to get another email saying, you know, join this class because we'll be like, what, I already got that. Okay, so at this point, I want to set up a class notebook. Now, I've been using class notebooks for the last couple of years. I really like them and there's different ways you can do it. Um, this is the basic setup. This is the collaboration space and this is where everybody can edit at the same time and so this would be good if you are throwing a question out there and you want the kids to type in their answers or if you have a list where maybe you're doing reports and everybody um, has to pick a topic but you don't want like five people doing the same topic so that could be like first come first serve now you do have to be aware that students can edit this so kids can change other kids um, you know work or type over it so it's just something to be aware of now the content library is nice because this is where teachers can keep master copies so if the student said like hey I deleted my journal um, accidentally what do I do you could just refer them to the content library and they could you know copy and paste a new copy or get what they needed there now the student notebooks are basically the notebook where students can type in, um, click the links for you know Microsoft Forms, um, for YouTube links and things like that and you can go into their notebook and edit um, and I have done that with student journals however there's a feature on Teams that I think is going to make my life a lot easier called assignments because when I go into student notebooks it's great you know I can put stickers in and I can make comments and type things and 
um, see what they have done. It is very time consuming and sometimes the network gets very slow. So when I'm doing that, it tends to like maybe the first couple are okay and then it might freeze. So I think assignments will be actually a lot better um, for my purposes. So at this point, I'm just going to hit next down here at the bottom right. And then these are going to be the actual folders in that notebook, like the tabs. I'm going to leave these as is. Now, if you want to, you could go ahead and change these. And typically, I like to change these into units. And so we can stay more organized. I put everything in the same folder. But again, you might want to do topics. So I might also do like a grammar and writing. And then for our purposes, maybe, you know, something like that. Okay, so this would be what students see in their notebook. Now you can always add more notebooks and push them in. Um, now, as far as I know, you can't delete notebooks unless you do it by hand. So there are times I've accidentally created a double notebook and I've just gone into each student's notebook and deleted it just to avoid the confusion. Okay, so this is just telling students a little more about it and they could click on that. I'm going to just delete this for a sample. Okay, so if I had a handout that I wanted to insert. Let's see, I might just, I don't really want to do that as a file. Let me see if I can, I did put a file in today called practice work and I might want to just copy and paste this into the notebook. So I'm going to hit control C and then I might want to just put this in the class notebook, control V and just as a sample. So I might want to put this in distribute page. So when I want to put something in students notebooks, I want to distribute that page. If I wanted to create a new notebook, I would click distribute new section and then I would put whatever title it was but I'm going to put this into one of the folders so let's say I'm going to distribute page and then I'm going to pick where I want to put this so this would be practice work and then I'm going to distribute this into that notebook so then when students open that this would be in here and they can click on the links and they can actually type and what I really like about Class Notebook is they can also, you know, highlight in there, you know, and use whatever they need to. Now, there's a lot of other features I'm not going to get into. One of my favorites is the Immersive Reader. Um, but again, there's so many things going on here that, that it could be overwhelming. So just to keep it simple... That's how I use the class notebook and then just really quickly I'm going to go to assignments and I've used Microsoft Forms a lot and what's really cool is you can go right here and make a quiz in Microsoft Forms and it will be embedded in assignments and another really amazing thing is this assignments um, tab where you can create they even have rubrics you can add and dates and then you can come here and check the work. So I think assignments is what I'm most excited about. But again, there's other features like chat um, and I put some links up today um, to ask students to read an article and respond to it as practice. Um, there's a calendar where I believe all the assignments would be um, and meetings and you can create new meetings, calls, um, different files. So again, there's a lot. This is just a basic intro 
of how to use Teams. So if you have any questions, leave them below or email me. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you want updates, please subscribe to my channel. There will be many new videos coming out. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video.